help us understand this timeline from, from where you sit, which is a better perch than anyone else in terms of visibility. How close are we to a vaccine for COVID-19? Good morning, Meg, and thanks for having me. We are pretty close. In fact, we are, this is really an unprecedented program between January 23rd, when, when the sequence of this virus was identified till today, about nine months later, we have three vaccines in phase three and a fourth one starting imminently. Uh, and, and two of those uh, vaccines in the U.S. have their uh, phase three trials almost fully recruited to, to the original plan. And really the readout of this phase three trial is 50% of the answer to the question when we read out efficacy. That is going to happen somewhere between October and December, January. The longer we wait, the more likely. The reason we don't know and we can't predict it is because it depends on the number of cases in the study. The other 50% of what's really important to define when the vaccine will be available is actually manufacturing and availability of vaccine doses. That's also progressing very well. We're investing in a large number, up to 25 different manufacturing facilities in the U.S. to help manufacture the six vaccines that we are supporting. And we already are stockpiling small number, small amounts of vaccine doses that will become readily available in November and in December. And if approval is granted around that time or authorization, we may be able, for instance, to immunize the most susceptible populations in the U.S. Uh, by December of 2020. Most of the elderly uh, population and first-line workers in January of 2021 and the rest of the U.S. population progressively in the month of February, March, and April. I see. Well, that's a really helpful uh, clarity uh, on the timeline. I want to ask you also about getting this data from the phase three trials. We've seen the protocols be posted publicly from the three leading vaccine candidates, something that drug companies typically don't share, uh, but they're citing increased need for transparency during this pandemic. And what they show is that there is the possibility for early looks at the data based on just a few dozen events, in Pfizer's case, 32 infections um, in this phase three trial. And if the balance is good enough for the vaccine being protective, they could potentially file for emergency use authorization based on just seeing 32 infections in the trial. Are you comfortable uh, with that kind of early look at, at the data, or would you rather they waited until the final cut um, at a, more like 150 or 160 infections? So it, it really depends what you need to understand with those numbers is that they're defined by mathematics and statistics. So it really depends on the real efficacy of the vaccine. When we design a clinical trial, we assume that the vaccine may have a certain efficacy, but the reality is whatever it's going to be. And if the vaccine efficacy is somewhat, I'm going to call it moderate, 60 percent or something like that, we may need to have a reasonably large number of cases because under those circumstances, for instance, you'll have 100 cases in the placebo group and 40 cases in the, in the, uh, the vaccine group, and, and that's 60% uh, efficacy. While if you had one case in the vaccine group and 30 cases in the placebo group with one uh, much smaller number of cases, you'll achieve actually stronger statistical outcome and, and certainty on the efficacy. I think the other really important number to keep in mind is the 15,000 subjects that will be immunized or have been immunized with the vaccine in generating information about the safety of these vaccines, particularly over the first two months uh, upon completion of the immunization schedule, which uh, the large database that the FDA has has shown that that's when most of the significant side effects, if they happen, actually happen. Of course, by definition, because of the pandemic, if these vaccines are highly effective, they will be introduced with a shorter observation time on safety than usual. Uh, but we are working very hard with the CDC and the FDA to ensure that pharmacovigilance surveillance after the vaccine is introduced in any population is as active as possible, almost as close as that in a clinical trial to ensure we appropriately document the vaccine safety.